Hey up lads and lasses, Danfi here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange. Today, talking about the light cone as we go through the rest of the cruisers. Not too many left now, although I'm missing quite a few of the variants of some of the other ones. Um, but yeah, the light cone. So the light cone fills a bit of an interesting role. Um, it's semi sort of anti uh, at the same time uh, with the base variant, you've got like a uh, ability to give your entire mid row AA within that row, which is actually quite nice. Um, I've still get to test it out properly. As you can see, I don't really have the tech points at the moment in this thing to test out 100%, but I have got reports of other people testing coming into me. Um, and there's some interesting ones and some kind of uh, meh, it doesn't really matter ones uh, as well. However, uh, I will just jump into this one uh, quickly. So the base variant, we are mid-row. There is an ability to pu uh, push it into front row, I believe, or is that on the... Uh, that might only be on the anti-air. Um, let me double check. Yeah, I think it's pretty much only on the anti-air then. I swear it's in the propulsion system. So mid-row, you are running a sort of a mid-row tank to an extent. At the same time, it's meant to be a kind of damage dealer anti-air support. It doesn't really do the AA support particularly well itself with its Tundra anti-aircraft UAV systems, only um, attacking when it's being attacked. As far as I've seen so far, I've had you know, ships in the row being blown up and this thing hasn't done much, or if any, AA. Um, bear in mind, that is without this anti-aircraft network 2 command uh, for the flagship. So I've still yet to test that, as I mentioned earlier. Being mid-row, though, I do recommend going into your HP first. That's just due to the fact that this will be targeted things by, like, Callistos or anything else trying to hit mid-row, back-row that are cruiser-focused. So do bear that in mind, and picking up one of the physical resistances doesn't hurt uh, in that situation at all. Other than that, you pretty much have to go straight into the Minecraft system straight after that. And my recommendation here is picking up the base lock-on radar enhancement, which increases the hit rate by 2% for everything. Uh, well, both its missiles. Uh, against everything, I mean. And then you can choose to ignore the hit rate against cruisers and higher class ships. Or you can pick it up going double cooldown, double damage. And then if you've either picked that up or haven't picked that up you have one slot free uh if you haven't and at that point it doesn't really matter what you pick potentially the reduced crit system damage uh that'll keep it alive a bit longer if it's getting hit systems hit by spores and mistrals or anything like that uh same time system hp does help a little bit the siege damage can be argued as well generally i think picking up probably the hit rate because it's just Probably just a better upgrade overall in most situations than the other three. Um, after that, probably going into either the Tundra aircraft system or the defensive battery. The Tundra aircraft is probably slightly better here. If you are not picking up the anti-aircraft uh, network, you're probably going to be picking up um, RTB, lock-on speed, hit rate, hit rate probably first then the uh, RTB, then probably lock-on speed. And you can pick up the reduced chance of being hit by guided weapons, or it's you picking up the anti-aircraft network. This is going to give you an ability to somewhat dodge missiles and torps, and being mid-row, it's going to get shot by missiles and torps a lot. Uh, it does go up to 20% as well, which is actually quite a nice little bonus for it. So not particularly great, not particularly bad. Defensive battery, if you've not done that first, probably going into the hit rate against uh, frigates, destroyers, or fighters, corvettes. Again, uh, you're probably best, probably best going the fighters, corvette. It is going to target aircraft first, but again, um, it is same row. I guess the, the hit rate help. The problem is, is it's a cannon, and cannons struggle against aircraft like at any given point. So I don't know. It's 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 one of those ones where it's like 
you can put points into it, but it's really pretty much meaningless. Um, after the hit rate against free, uh, Fighters Corvettes, picking up double cooldown and a single damage is probably what I'd recommend there. Um, I'd probably recommend the Tundra UAV system first, albeit it's not particularly great either. The warning system, uh, if you want to make your ship look fancy because it's maxed out, this is when you pick it up. Because uh, this doesn't work, I have tested this, I flew it at an enemy with and without and there was no added damage or anything like that, which you would see from a 30% hit rate increase on your fighters. So yeah, this doesn't seem to be working. I reckon this is completely misworded because um, it's the same on the wing to SAR and I'm 90% certain it's probably buffing itself still. And the devs have got it mixed up with buffing itself and buffing uh, the fighters in your fleet. So yeah, this doesn't work. And I have tested this because people mentioned on the Winged Assar they could get it working, blah, blah, blah. I tested it on the Winged Assar. I've tested it on this. It doesn't work. After that, going into the propulsion system here, picking up the cruising speed. It's not a particularly fast ship. Um, I can't remember exactly what it reaches because I pulled tech points out of it from a couple of seasons ago. Um, but yeah, it, it does all right. It can fit in the frigate destroyer fleet, albeit it slows it down a little bit, um, but it's all right. That's pretty much it for the light cone base variant. We'll go over to the anti-aircraft type and this is one where I kind of see it being used due to some interception mechanics that go on. Uh, so we will talk a bit about that. So combat rolls it is a mid-row ship. I highly recommend going into the propulsion system first and making it front row. Just due to the fact that it increases the chance of intercepting missiles by 5% and torps by 6%. And... It actually helps. I have noticed a damage decrease against heavily HT Callistos, albeit you don't want many of these. You maybe want one, two at max. They will also semi uh, sort of put you in a position where it's tanking front row, which isn't too bad. It is a Noma ship, so they do have sort of higher than average health and armor, albeit a bit lower on the energy front. After you've uh, made it front row, I recommend going into the Tundra aircraft system here and picking up the uh, either the primary weapon of the aircraft UAVs and the hangar has a 5% chance to intercept missiles and a 5% chance to intercept torpedoes. That works quite nicely on this. And then, <laughs> as you can see, I'm just stacking up interception on this thing like nobody's business. Uh, you can ignore the uh, situational awareness system. I swear there's more. There it is. On the main weapon system, you can get a further 25% intercept of missiles and torps, and I would recommend picking that up. That kind of buffers your whole, um, pre well, it pretty much buffers your entire fleet uh, with the ability to intercept. Because it's always the uh, same row, so any missiles basically coming into that first row have a chance to be shot down by this thing. So that's why I highly recommend it, especially in the front row. After that, this is when you want to go into your armor, picking up your double HP and your physical resistances. Again, you are sat on 10% energy resistance, which sucks a little bit. But, you know, most people are running Taurus over Assault Taurus, so those Taurus are going to be shooting your Taurus. So it does stay alive, not too badly on the front. And again, I only recommend building one or two just for a little bit of a buffer at the start of a fight on that uh, intercept. After you've done your armor system and you've made it front row and you've picked up all the interception you can possibly can, this is where you may want to sort of finish it off a little bit uh, and finish off the main weapon systems. First off, again, picking up the hit rate against fighters corvettes does help a bit here. The AA on this isn't too bad and that's mostly due to the fact that the uh, anti-ship missile array Although hitting small has the potential to hit fighters as well, and the aircraft system with 100 damage per hit can also hit um, uh, fighters within that row. So it does okay against fighters and corvettes. It's by no means a replacement for spores or mistrals or, you know, fighters that do AA. 
After that, picking up the cooldown will help you out. Picking up the hit rate, uh, the base hit rate will also help out there as well. And this pretty much leaves you with one slot to pick up one of the damage mods, which isn't much, but again, you're only going to get 10% from it, uh, which on the case of the missile system, which is what you want to be buffing, uh, you're only going to get 10 damage anyway, so missing out the other damage isn't going to give you much more damage in the first place. After that, moving over to the defensive battery, I recommend uh, picking up the hit rate against fighters and corvettes again. Double picking up the cooldown and a damage, uh, same as before. Or moving over to the Tundra, we've already picked up one of the missile tracking. So at this point, probably picking up lock on and either the RTB or the hit rate is going to help you out a bit here. I'd go hit rate over RTB personally, uh, just because when that out, that means it's going to get more damage out. RTB basically acts like a cooldown for aircraft. So. Yeah, probably go for the hit rate. And that's your three slots pretty much uh, The Warning system, again, I'd recommend completely ignoring. It doesn't work. And again, we've picked up one of the active... Uh, so we have picked up the movement to the front row to increase that intercept. But then picking up double crews and one of the warps for your last three remaining slots on the anti-aircraft type is how I'd go about it. Now, the Assault type, this is kind of like a mini Callisto. Um, I say that in a loose sense, because it isn't quite as good as the Callisto. I ran these maxed out last server, and the damage was good. And when it was hitting Frigates Destroyers in the mid and back row, it probably outdamages the Callisto. However... It doesn't stand up against, say, HT Callisto or the base Callisto or even the support Callisto to an extent uh, when hitting cruisers and above, uh, mostly due to the fact that the missiles themselves don't actually do all that much damage. You're only looking at 280 per hit where you're looking at the Callistos being much higher. So this gets affected by armor quite a bit more. Um, and that's where it kind of like rolls off in a little bit and uh, not as good as... Uh, the base Callisto or, or any of the Callisto variants against those type of uh, fleets anyway. So, mid-row ship. I do recommend picking up the double HP mods. You can ignore the physical resistances after that if you want or pick it up. It's only one extra slot, so if you have the points, you may as well, right? After that, going into the Minecraft system. Here, highly recommend picking up uh, the base hit rate, you don't have to worry about the hit rate against cruisers and higher class ships. It's pretty damn accurate in the first place, being missiles. So you can ignore this one, because uh, the base hit rate I find to be enough anyway. Going double cooldown, double damage, uh, bringing you to five slots, and your last slot being the heavy ammo here, which increases uh, the damage done by 60% uh, for a duration of 30% sec uh, 30, for 30 seconds against cruisers. So it's pretty nice. It's not permanent. The last 30 seconds and you wait in 30 seconds and it's going again. But the extra damage is quite uh, decent, especially if it, when it's you know targeting those cruisers, as I said. And it will, for the most part, uh, sort of hit cruisers. It's going to go destroy a frigate carrier, battle cruiser, cruiser. I found it kind of ignores carriers, battle cruisers, though. It does seem to hit destroyers, cruisers more often. So I'm not sure what's really going on there. Could just be a bug. Um, after that, generic battery system, pretty much same as before. Recommend pick up, picking up the hit rate against fighters, corvettes, double cooldown, single damage, and finishing it off with the Tundra UAV support. This is a support UAV. It will increase the hit rate of um, friendlies. Unfortunately, you can't force it to do cruises like you can with the series. Uh, or the series tactical or the predator tactical so you can sort of ignore that a little bit with these it really doesn't matter uh, i'd recommend picking up the reduced chance of being hit by guided weapons i should have probably mentioned that one a bit earlier that is going to help out its tank in the mid row potentially pick this up before you go to the mine car after the system hp after that probably rtb i don't know if the lock on speed or the hit rate actually helps Lock on speed should theoretically help more, but I haven't seen much difference when I've been removing them and testing them. So uh, the RTP does help though. It does increase the uptime 
of your uh, spotter UAVs. So recommend probably the target lock-on speed after that. You've only got three slots to play with here. Warning system, again, doesn't do anything. You can flat out ignore it unless you want your ship to look shiny and that's about it. Same uh, base stats for the uh, propulsion that I pretty much always go for. Uh, double cruising speed and a single warp speed. And you shall be done. So that's Light Cone. The Assault, not bad. Um, like I said, against Frigate Destroyer, the current meta, it does a little bit better than the Callisto. However, if you start seeing a lot of cruiser, battle cruiser, which I have recently, you're seeing a lot more Jaegers about and Predators because of their ability to you know, prioritize against carriers, um, the Callisto is going to do better off in that uh, situation. The anti-aircraft type, one, two of as an intercept is actually quite nice. The base variant I actually don't recommend, although I still yet to test the command system on it, which could potentially make it considerably better. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.